the fault that is responsible for the magnitude 7 earthquake that struck Haiti in, in January this year is not the one we thought originally had ruptured. And it changes uh, drastically the, uh, the understanding that we have of not only the tectonic setting of the whole area, but also the hazard level among other faults uh, in the vicinity of that, uh, of that earthquake. So the way we, uh, the way we started this, this investigation was uh, on, the, on the premises that the, uh, the culprit was uh, the Henry Keel Fault, which is the main fault that runs uh, through uh, southern Haiti. And all of us, including myself, when we went there and did field work, that's what we had in mind. This is the fault that ruptured, and that's where we focused our efforts. Uh, and the first, uh, first piece of uh, interesting information came out from the geologists um, who went there very quickly after the earthquake, and they were not able to find a surface break caused by the earthquake, which was um, a surprise. And after that, I guess the, the, uh, uh, the second piece of evidence that, was, uh, that led us to believe that there was an, uh, an unmapped fault was uh, geodetic data uh, from radar, satellites that tell us how much the ground moved and also from GPS measurement that also tell us the same complementary uh, information of the 3D ground motion. Well, the new fault doesn't have an official name uh, but uh, yet, uh, but we tend to call it the Leogan fault. Leogan is the name of the town uh, that, uh, that is essentially sitting on top of that fault, on top of that earthquake. Uh, it's a town that suffered great damage. I think that's about 80% of the buildings are uh, collapsed during the earthquake. So in terms of hazard, there are, there are two, um, two categories of implications. There's the long term and, and the short term. The implication of the fact that we are now identifying a, a new fault, and a new fault in the sense that it was not mapped before, it probably existed before, but we just, we just didn't know it was there. In the, in, in the long term, it means that there, is, uh, there are faults other than the Enriquillo that are sources of potential earthquakes in the area. And the question is, is that the only one or are there more? Um, my intuition at the moment is that there are more and they are probably offshore for uh, a large part. So I think there's a, a large effort that has to be done to identify similar structures yet unmapped that uh, may be the source of future earthquakes in the region. Um, and if we find them, then we will learn something, we'll be able to better prepare in the long term for, for uh, a hazard. In the short term, uh, the, uh, the earthquake itself modified the uh, state of stress in the Earth's crust uh, around the rupture. And um, at this point, uh, the research, I would say, is, is, is not final enough that we can say with confidence whether a uh, neighboring segment was brought closer to failure or farther away from uh, failure by this earthquake. Um, it's, uh, these models are, are, are complicated and they depend a lot on the amount of uh, slip on the fault, the exact geometry of the fault. So we are at the stage now, uh, uh, different groups working on this earthquake are at the stage where they're trying to um, put together the best possible rupture model and from there then we can go towards saying yes, uh, hazard has been increased or no hazard has been uh, decreased.